Soothing music on Smooth 98.1. Baby, baby, baby. All right, we are coming in in. 14 seconds, 13, and the countdown goes. In. It's the Office Journal on Smooth 98.1. Yes, that's the sound of the Office Journal here on Smooth 98.1. Love music, love life. I am very excited about the conversation we are about to have. And I hope that you are as excited as I am. You can already feel my excitement or maybe see it if you are a part of a YouTube stream. What you're looking for is youtube.com forward slash smooth 91 FM Lagos. We are streaming live. And if you have subscribed to our channel, you have clicked on the notification bell, you should have already gotten the notification that it did. We are live, so go right there and stream. Drop your comments in the chat box because that's what it is for. Also, in the course of, course of the conversation, you can send your messages to WhatsApp. It is 0809-444-0981. If you are Twitter savvy, it is at smooth981fm. That's the handle. The hashtag is officejournal981. So welcome to the Office Journal where we talk about things relating to you, your work, your productivity, some habits that you should imbibe and other things that just can help you become a better professional, an entrepreneur, a business owner, a part of an organization, an intrapreneur. I'm guessing the number of people do not quite understand the concept of intrapreneurship, but I tell you, it is good. Now, that said, we're talking about relationships. I have said that over and over again, and this topic came as a result of reading the book of my guest this morning. My guest is a social entrepreneur, is the founder of the Kayo Day Leadership Career Institute. I believe I have not more than that. He is an author, he's a social entrepreneur, he's the author of two books. One of it is called The Africa I Dream to See, and the second one is called Five Years, Ten Lessons Life Taught Me. He's an SDGs advocate or youth champion. He is a youth activist, he's an educationist, a lot of things. And that includes being passionate about the growth of Nigeria and Africa. His motto is what I call I am, I am because you are. He's all about the concept of Ubuntu. So please, ladies and gentlemen, do make welcome my special guest. Joining me all the way from London. His name is Ahmed Kayode Alabi. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. It's nice to be here today. And yeah, you did more than the name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's fine. It's Kayode Kaya Kaya Alabi, Kaya Alabi Leadership and Career Initiative. Oh, uh, I feel yeah. ashamed right now. I'm so no, sorry. No, that, that's fine. That's fine. It, uh, but, but it's nice to be here. And I'm really looking forward to share from my own experience and, and really looking forward to the conversation and the questions or the actions <laughs> that come as a result of this conversation. Okay, we can as well just start. First, not too many people understand what social entrepreneurship involves. So maybe we can start with that. What is social entrepreneurship? Yeah, so um, um, uh, when we think about social entrepreneurship, we we'll, we'll first need to look at you know, what, what's entrepreneurship basically. Um, so it's the um, ability to um, solve problem and, uh, you know, and earn uh, a, a, an income through solving a particular problem. Um, so you're creating wealth for people, you're employing people, you're creating jobs, uh, and you're also solving the problem. Um, but the main uh, aim of entrepreneurship is to make profit. Um, so that's like the main aim, even when you look at the um, I don't know, is it factors of, of labor or something we did then in, uh, no, it's no, something around, I can't remember, but it was in, it was in economics. Uh, we had uh, land, we had labor, we had capital and entrepreneurship, uh, yeah. last one. Uh, so I've forgotten what it's been called. Uh, but again, it's, um, it's, it's entrepreneurship helps in, you know, creating wealth and, uh, you know, it also uh, helps in generating profit. And, uh, and solving a problem. I mean, the main aim of entrepreneurship is to solve problems aside from making profits. But in social entrepreneurship, 
you're also solving problem, you're generating wealth, you're making profit, but your profit is going back to solving the problem. So wealth creation, initiation, entrepreneurship is not an end, it's a means to an end. Um, so the, the money goes back to the work. You know, it's not like you're creating wealth for yourself or you're making profits and then everybody takes the profits and enrich themselves. That doesn't happen in uh, social entrepreneurship. You're yet to solve a problem. And most of the time, people look at what are the creative ways to solve, you know, that problem? Um, you know, how do we solve that problem? How do we ensure that we, we generate wealth or we generate income or we generate resources to continue to solve a problem that is dear to our heart? So for me, when I think about even entrepreneurship in itself, it's social entrepreneurship <laughs> because mm. you don't, we shouldn't just have entrepreneurship separately. It's, we should have social entrepreneurs, people who are working to solve social problems, social issues, and then the money comes back to solving, continue to solve that problem, uh, basically. So um, in my case, I'm more of, of the person on the nonprofit side, you know, really more of like, you know, we generate that kind of income and basically to solve problems, no profit, nothing. Uh, so in in um, in in uh, non profit you don't you don't make profit you make surplus or, or mm. uh basically so yeah I don't want to go into like technical terms but no, it's... <laughs> okay I want to stretch it a little bit what is the difference between social entrepreneurship and philanthropy yeah so in again in social entrepreneurship is as if you're running a business uh but the business is just towards like you're making profits but the profits goes back to the business. And go back to solving that problem, you know. Um, so why philanthropy is like you're giving money, you're donating. So it's not like you uh. know, so you're giving money. You're not like the way you make money is through like donation, through you know crowdfunding, through different means. So people are giving. You're giving people money for free, basically. And um, in philanthropy, uh, it could be that you're giving money because you're closely aligned to a particular issue. So for example, if you're closely aligned to like an issue of education, maybe education changed your life and did many things for you. And you felt like you want to give back to, to the educational sector or to an educational charity, you could say that, well, every year I'll be giving $100,000 of my money to educational charity, that's philanthropy. You know, or you could say you want to give it through maybe a donor agency like UNICEF or even a small growing organization like ours. Um, so that's um that's um you know um philanthropy. It's like you're 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 giving money to a particular cause, you know, to a charitable cause most of the time. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't mean that if you're running a social enterprise, you can raise money for your enterprise, you know, you can mm-hmm. and bootstrap, you can get money from from people. But again, it's the 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 aim are different. Basically, one is generating profits, while uh, one is is um is generating income, uh, more of like revenue, uh, kind of thing. So if one is having um a profit and loss account, the other person is having an income and expenditure account. Mm. <laughs> so it's uh it's quite um uh, yeah different in terms of the way it's been been run and led. Uh, basically so one has capital one is getting accumulated funds so you know uh, it's it's a different concept when you look at um, you know accounting terms and the way the accounts are being run and led and how um, yeah but there are components we can learn from we can learn from the concept of business to drive um, um, non-profits or charitable causes or philanthropic causes uh, because there's so much value we can get from them and there's also so much value they can get from us as well, mm. people run run on profit in terms of like caring about the people. Mm. People, uh, don't let me go into like details. Let me just. Talk. No, it's it's fine. This is very good knowledge for us, and giving us a sneak peek or more insight into what we, a number of people do not understand about social entrepreneurship. Because sometimes I've heard someone say that, oh, I don't. What do you call social entrepreneurship? Is sometimes a scam because they expect you to just be doing philanthropic activities and not be geared at all towards making profits. Because at the end of the day, you need to sustain whatever it is that you're out there to do. If you're out there to solve a problem, you need funds. So Mm -hmm. some people do think that social entrepreneurship is the same as philanthropy and you're supposed to just be doing charitable courses up and down without understanding that you set up an outfit to solve problems and you need funds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you for that. 
clarifying one. So we'll take the first break. And then when we come back, in the words of the legendary Fela Nikolapo, we're going to start what we have come here to do, talking about relationships. You're listening to Office Journal here on Smooth 98.1. So we'll take an ad break and then we come back. We're streaming on YouTube, by the way. So when we're done, I'll send you the link. Every easy morning, I care for my family. So I always keep it. Quick instant oatmeal. It gives us no good. It's high in fiber. No story. It's easy to remember. Just add hot water. I can choose my favorite. Chocolate. This is me, Aladdin. No, I don't think so. Quicker instant oatmeal. Goodness. I think her voice has more depth compared to that one. You, summon the oracle now. Greetings, my king. How can the oracle serve you? <laughs> you will tell me the secret to your power. How did that get move without a driver? <laughs> my secret is the power of 5G. Tell me more about the power of 5G. <laughs> With hyper fast internet speeds, low to zero lag, and buffering, multiple connections, and quality data sharing, 5G will give you amazing things like remote <laughs> surgeries, self driving vehicles, fiber loads, and two gigabytes per second, smart hoods, instant driver translation, and so much more. 5G's amazing technology will change the way we experience life and the internet. Get ready to encounter the incredible. And remember, no be to do now MTN 5G. Let's talk, let's talk football. The most anticipated match. When the action kicks in, we go totally in without fear. He's got the return ball here. Really Bringing you the best of the best. Uh, the game by game <laughs> account of magnificent <laughs> moments in the world of football. Every kick, every pass, every tackle, every goal, and every win. Get the total football experience right here on Smooth 98.1 every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 11 a.m. This is a scandalous decision. Total All right, we're coming in. Total experience. Now that was by design. Smooth 98.1. Point one. What will feel good to me right now is you staying tuned and staying locked to your, your radio set or whatever it is that you're using to listen to us. By the way, you can stream live. So go to our website. It is www.smooth981.fm www.smooth981.fm or you can search for us across any web, any radio streaming app, just search for Smooth 92 on FM Lagos. You can also go to YouTube where we're streaming live, see my face, see that of my guests, and it is youtube.com forward slash Smooth 92 on FM Lagos. Remember that also allows you to share the link with somebody and invites them to be a part of this conversation. And my guest is Hamed Kayode Alabi. He's a social entrepreneur and has DG's champion, also a youth advocate and activist, and also an author, but a, a, an author rather. So many things to say yeah. and everything just yeah. keeps coming in. <laughs> <laughs> and we are talking about relationships, how to build and effectively nurture them. So back to you, Coyote. I take it that since you're a social entrepreneur, you probably had to learn and understand the importance of relationship from a personal discovery or maybe you had some sort of epiphany and oh i really need people so take us through that how did you realize the vital role that relationship played yeah um i, I think the first thing is to uh probably you know i think first I, I love to share stories and i love to like you know share my my upbringing and story um there was a time you know we were living in in bariga and it was like a kind of you know, like this face me and slap you house, you know, all of these homes, you know, that you, you, you get in Bariga. And um, there was a time we were asked to leave that house. We were all sent back in. And the people who saved us, you know, we were trying to like, that would have been the first time I would have been homeless. And we were like looking for people to like, you know, to um, accommodate us and we didn't get any. And I remember a neighbor they had an uncompleted house in Igbogwe Korodu and we're living together. And they said, can you, you know, come and join us? Even if it's uncompleted, you know, they, they kind of like, you know, had 
you know, uh, we if I the, the flooring was was with clay and and uh, the windows were covered with like you know with with some kind of like nylon and bags. Um, so we we you know we joined them, you know we moved them with them, and that's how we were in homeless. Uh, so it's so reflecting on that um, experience. Imagine we haven't built a relationship. Imagine we haven't you know have conversation. We weren't talking to them. Imagine we're just living together and be like, oh, this is your house. This is my house. No, we won't talk to each other. So, you know, building those key relationships really, really helped us. And I mean, they accommodated us for like even over a year uh, during that time or during that moment before we could be able to move into our own house. Um, so the truth is, um, you know, I've learned the power of relationship from that, you know, from that experience that you actually need people to survive. You know, you need people to survive when you're in need. But again, it's not when you need people, that's when you go on and build relationship. It's when you don't even need them at all. It's just, you know, being human and being there for people, you know, paying attention to people, listening, you know, being finding ways you can support first. And in my work, you know, looking at that, you know, relating it to my work, um, I remembered when I started, I was like, how do I, you know, go about this? Every single thing we've done in our organization is built on people and is built on relationship. And I could recall there was a quote then that I learned, you know, when I was starting early in the nonprofit sector. And it says that I don't buy what I can rent. I don't rent what I can borrow. And I don't borrow what I can get for free. If mm. I have that type of network, I don't buy what I can rent. I don't rent what I can borrow and I don't borrow what I can get for free hmm. if I have the right type of network. Wow. And, you know, the quote laid the basis of, you know, how as a young social entrepreneur, how I was able to like grow, you know, in that process and in that moment. Uh, I remembered when we started, I could recall saving 500, 500. I mean, I was saving like, you know, 100 Naira, 200 Naira into my safe boss. And at the end of the day, I had 3,000 and I wanted to start a nonprofit with 3,000 Naira. So, um, you know, I, I remember, you know, breaking that box and, you know, we were having our first outreach. You know, I remember paying a photographer out of that money <laughs> to take photos. I remember renting, uh, you know, microphone, sound system out of that money and we had nothing. So the remaining, I just said my cousin, you know, you would teach entrepreneurship, I would teach leadership. And um, I had a friend, you know, we, I told the friend that you would be the MC. And uh, three of us, you know, we just came together and we, we started, you know, again, you know, you have this network of people that you can leverage on. And the first people who can come to your rescues are your friend and family. And, you know, that was how we went into like the whole, uh, you know, show. And we went, you know, we, we, we started talking to, to the kids and started having our project. And I told the story on social media. So again, telling those stories attracted people to be like, wow, interesting, you know, want to support you, want to help you. And during this process of telling those stories, I remember the people I gave, you know, when I was, in, when I was a student at the university. So during my time at the university, I used to do free tutorials. I did free tutorials from my first year to my fourth year. I didn't collect a dime, you know, and I remember some of my, so one of the, people that I met during my tutorial session, that person actually created our website for free when we started the organization. And the person came on as a director of digital technology. Um, this person created like even my own personal website, this person created it for free. So um, again, it, it shows how givers can be at the top of the ladder. Uh, you don't need to uh, need something before you give something. Uh, so uh, when you're thinking about nurturing relationship, you're thinking about giving. And you're also thinking about um, the emotional bank account, which I mentioned in my book. Um, you know, the truth is um, when you want to build relationship, you need to think about the bank account. The normal bank account, what happens? People donate money in the normal bank account. And when you need money, you go on to withdraw. But in the emotional bank account, what you're donating or what you're depositing, rather, that's the right word. What you're depositing, you deposit money in your normal bank account. But in an emotional bank account, you're depositing trust. Uh, so when you help somebody, when you do something without expecting nothing in return for people, you're depositing trust. 
when you listen to people, you know, when they have challenges and you listen to them, you're depositing trust. It's like a relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband and wife. When they've gotten a problem, maybe your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend had a problem and they come to you and they, you know, they talk to you about those problem and you listen, you have deposited trust. They've de- like they've, you've, you've deposited trust. So it goes into your emotional bank account. But the problem about people is that people try to withdraw early. You've not built any relationship. You've not deposited any trust and you're already withdrawing. Draining somebody already. What you've not deposited into, you're withdrawing. So people run away from you. <laughs> you know, because you've committed sort of like a social bankruptcy. And that's why people would have asked for help from many people that they've gotten help, they've received, they've not given, and people will start running away from them. That's social bankruptcy. So before you can take or withdraw, you also have to give in foods before you can withdraw. And it's very important to know when to withdraw. So people withdraw early. They've not been relationship. You're just meeting me for the first time and you're trying to withdraw. So for me, when I meet people in my journey, you know, I try to build relationship. I try to think, what can I give to this person first? What can I do for them first? You know, even without expecting anything in return, and I would have given to them that when I'm about to withdraw, they will even say no. In fact, they will be willing to go, you know, the extra mile for me because they know I'll be there for them. The reason why people would be there for you is because they know that you'll be there for them. If you ask any of my team members that, why are you giving your blood and sweat to Ahmed? Why are you giving your blood and sweat to the cause? They will tell you because Ahmed will do the same for me. And that's the relationship, right? So again, people need to understand some of these concepts. You know, they need to understand the emotional bank account and how it works. You know, I see people, they will reach out to me. I'm like, you want to wrinkle me? You want to, you want to <laughs> bring me to the extreme? I will run away from you. And then I won't respond to your message because you've not built any core relationship with people. Um, and I could go on to give, you know, examples in my work of how I volunteered for organization. Like I was running my organization, I kept volunteering with multiple and multiple and multiple and multiple organization. You know, I was learning, I was giving. So whenever I need these people, it's very easy for them to like say that, you know, to, to come on board and to say they want to support me. So before, you know, in, in, um, um, one of my mentors, Shegufa Tudimo, would say something. He said, in a world where uh, people are used to receiving a giver, we always stand out. So um, I think we need to create a world where we have many givers and many people who are willing to help because that's what creates, you know, relationship. That's what creates bonding. And that's what helps you to get things done. Um, and, and probably maybe you have like, you know, a follow-up question. I want to, to I, w- I would like to talk about some archetypes of, of, you know, how, you know, one can, can build, you know, relationship and the different type of, you know, group of people, you know, within, within, um, you know, um, um, building within a relationship and how to identify them and also avoid some group of people. But yeah, let me just stop here. I know you have a lot to say, considering the fact that it was a good chunk of your book, Five Years, Ten Lessons Life Taught Me. We'll definitely get to that. And I'll drop a question before we take this break and I'll come back to take your thoughts on it. Somebody once said that she doesn't like how relationships have been perceived at this stage. You know, you go to an event, your aim is to, in fact, it is boldly written on the event to network to meet people, to do all of that. So different people package, they come to an event because of what they can get. Although some of them, like you mentioned, might not necessarily withdraw early, but the end game is such that I can get something from this one. Even when a person is depositing or giving anything to that relationship, it's because at the back of your mind, you want to get something from this person. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is there such a thing as altruism? when it concerns relationship, that you're just doing it for the sake of, I'm not expecting anything whatsoever from you. Although you have mentioned it while you were explaining, but really for a good number of people, let's just be sincere with ourselves. Is there really such a thing as altruism? I am. I don't want anything from you. I just want to help you. I just want to grow you. I just want to impact you. And I am not, I'm not grooming you or I am not helping you for the sake of what I can get from you later on. Mm. Is there such a thing or it is absolutely normal to 
have such plans and motive at the back of your mind. It's just how you go about it. Um, so I want you to think on that. Hold on. And we will take a break and we'll come back to the answer on that question. Okay. You're listening to Office Journal here on Smooth 98.1. They call me M.I. Mr. Incredible, short black boy, the chairman. You are so we have two minutes. <laughs> I already have like a packed response. I was about to respond. You're like, oh, I'm not. <laughs> I know, I know. Let's see, my. Oh, by the way, let me clarify that that quote with you. Hold on, please. How did that get a move without a driver? So you said, I don't buy what I can get, uh, what I can rent. Yeah. I don't rent what I can borrow. Yeah. And I don't borrow what I can get if I have the right social network. I don't, I don't buy what I can rent. I don't know what I can do, and I don't know what I can get for free. I don't know what I can get for free. If I have the right type of network. If I have the right type of network. All right. So I'm putting that up on Twitter and tagging you. I bought it from Adidas official store on Junior. Several international and local brands on yep. offer. You are sure to get quality and original items when you shop directly from the brand official store on Junior. You can shop for these items at juicy discounts during the brand festival from 12th of September to 2nd of October. It's just a popular quote that I normally refer to. Exactly. And return any order for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we are coming back in. This is Smooth 98.1. Very correct. You're listening to Smooth 98.1. Love music, love life. The show right now is Office Journal. We are talking about relationships. And my guest is Hamed Kayode Alabi. He's a social entrepreneur and also a two-time author. And before we went on that short breather, I was asking you if there is such a thing as altruism when it concerns relationship, or it is perfectly normal to give because later on you want to get yeah, I think it's really, really important to um, note the kind of people when it comes to build a relationship. And Adam Grant conducted a research that out of like 30,000, I think, people that you, um, they researched, uh, you know, across the globe, um, the, the um, people who actually, um, you know, we, the, in terms of building relationships, in terms of people, you know, who, who, who even work in an organization, most of the time we have matchers. And uh, is quid pro is it quid pro quo? Quo? I, I can't remember. Quid yeah, pro quid pro quo. Yeah. Quid, yeah. So, uh, these are like um, you know, you scratch my back, I scratch my back, and kind of thing. So we have mean you know more of those people, and and it shows you know in what you're saying that you know people go for an event knowing that is but they're gonna get you know something in return. Um. So those are they, they are called matchers. And we also, we also need those kind of people to, you know, sustain or build an organization or to be, be in an organization. You have matchers. But what people don't talk about are the givers. Um, the people can be at the bottom of the ladder and they can also be at the highest of the ladder because you can give and be the, you know, you're helping everybody to succeed and to survive. And people be like, that's, 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 that person is not, um, is, uh, you know, they, is stupid. Uh, is trying to help everybody who will use him and we use it mm-hmm. the ladder and we would we would grow. Uh, but it's really important to create a space for givers to be able to give and create a world where we have more givers uh, because it's givers that takes an organization most of the time to the next level uh, because of how they give and how they do. Um, so when it comes to altruism, it's because uh, givers have been, you know, there's a why behind their giving. Uh, there's a reason why they are going into a relationship because they understand that there's, there's, there's something there that they, they don't know they can see. There's a particular why for them. And when you ask them, um, Adam Grant said in the research that if you go to an interview, I want to identify who the taker is. Ask them, um, tell us four people you've helped. And they will tell you the people that are higher above them. So mm-hmm. the takers kiss up and kick down. They don't help people on the down. And that's how you can quickly identify them. Much as we help somebody will give them a return, somebody at their level most of the time. If somebody will give them a return. But when you ask givers, 
givers will tell you mostly people below them, people who probably would not be able to give them anything in return. And that's how you identify the givers. So again, they are givers, they are matchers, and they are takers. And then they are takers in fakers' clothes. Um, Hold on, so, boys, you know, rewind. <laughs> Takers in what clothes? Well, I think takers and givers clothes, rather. Okay. So they would give you, but they would take mm-hmm, in multiple folds. Um, so you need to be able to read, you know, some of those. Um, um, you, you need to read the signs uh, of, of those kind of people that is this person really, really giving me or they want to take 100 times. Uh, um, mm-hmm. or, um, so, you, you know, you, you have to identify those people in your, in your organization. Mm-hmm. In the relationship that you you build so again um givers are the people who can quickly climb the ladder because they've given so much without expressing nothing in return that when they now need, need help there are multiple people that they can go back to to receive from and to get help from um so it's easy for givers who are not expecting anything in return to always go back and when they fall through the ladder when they grow through the ladder and they are falling there are people to push them back up because they didn't kick down Mm-hmm. But for a taker who has kicked down and kissed up, when they are going down, the people that they've kicked down will be the ones who say that you're coming down, right down, you know. And then the matchers, matchers don't pity you. When they notice that uh, you've, you know, you've not, you've not, you, you didn't fulfill that promise, you are a taker, they will show you. Hmm. They'll be like, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for you. You will come, you will need me, you know. And again, for matchers as well, it's very hard for them to receive, Right. Mm-hmm. Because for matchers, they are like, they are, you know, when they are expecting something from you, they are expecting that they have to give something back. So they are under pressure. Hmm. They don't have rest of mind. But for givers, people will give passionately. And, you know, for givers, you know, probably, like I said, it could be the experience they've had, you know. So we need to create a world where people can give. You know, we need to create a world where, you know, we have multiple givers and that's how givers can shine in an organization, right? So when we have a place where we have multiple givers, things will definitely grow and change and people will have that art of like asking for help. And what do I mean by giving? It's not by donating money or giving people money. It's by even listening to people. It's by like, oh, ask me for help. It's those little, little, little things that people can see, you know, and, and, and that's why I encourage you others to do remarkable and amazing things. So I think there are people who have gotten this, um, you know, giving spirit. Uh, the people who would give, you know, uh, for uh, you know to to help other people who probably do have access to resources and how uh, to help their even their junior colleague who they know that they can't give them anything in return um, in an organization. They are definitely these people. Uh, but we also need, you know, the, the likes of the matchers who go to the networking event to like give me and give you to also you know, create, create uh, a kind of relationship and to uh, move forward as well. Uh, but we need to create a culture where we have more people with that altruism, with that more giving, uh, because you can give and then you get burnt out, you know, you're not able to. Mm. So you need to also give in the right way. How do you give? You know, we there's something that I learned recently, boundless generosity. Um, so it's more or less like uh, creating boundaries to how generous you are. Um, so in terms of like, you know, if you're giving, you could say that, um, well, I can't give at this time, but there's a specific time I've created, you know, maybe Friday, every evening, book a time slot. So that is not, you know, the time to do your work. Um, so you're giving, but you, you've created a kind of boundless, you know, generosity or, you know, you're like, oh, this is the money for charity that I've, you know, mm. set aside. So you're creating time for, you know, your generosity. And there, there are ways, if you feel like you're burning out, there are ways you can renew your energy as well. I mean, there's so much I can, I, I would I would keep on talking. There's so much I would say when it comes to how givers can actually give, you know, sustainably so that you don't get uh, bought out. But definitely there are people who actually give, give give generously you know who just give from their hearts basically without expressing nothing in return but when they need help they have multiple people to reach out to and easily receive you know when you open your hand you can easily get back mm-hmm. but when you let go it's very easy for you to receive and i've seen that happen in my own work i've seen mm-hmm. that multiple times like you know people willing to die 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 for for the cause basically all right, well, you can let us into your own world, how you were able to build those relationships such that they were willing to lay their lives down, either figuratively or literally for you. 
How did you unlock it? How do you build your relationships? How do you nurture and water those relationships? Or how do you even identify the different people that you're able to, to keep the relationship with and the uniqueness of each relationship? Because I remember from your book, you had different book, uh, people. You had the fools, you had the, I've forgotten okay. the remaining two now. Yeah. Yes, family, yeah, and fools. Yes. So just <laughs> let us in into that. Yeah, so again, um, you you know, you're asking how we are humans, uh, we are social animals, we can sense when things are wrong, and we can sense when things are awkward, we can sense when this is a danger, and it's not going to be good for me. Um, so when I come into a conversation, and I know the ask, and I saw the ask, and I know that it's going to affect me and affect my people, I won't accept physically, because you can sense it, you can sense the danger. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's built on a personal philosophy of the people, um, you know, so you have to have a strong philosophy, a strong core values, um, you know, which is, which, which is bordered around integrity. Um, for somebody who is greedy, when they see some deal, they will just, you know, jump on it, even if it's going to, if it's going to soil the relationship, they don't care. So I would say first is the personal philosophy. Um, I would say second is um, knowing that, um, you know, the, again, they say, why? Everything I do is it around the why. If I'm volunteering for a cause, there's a particular why I'm volunteering for a cause. I want to learn something. You know, it's the willingness and the ability to learn, to, you know, to all people, to be humble, even if you know that you have had more than some people as well. You know, um, I could recall going for an event in 2018 or 2017. And, you know, I was at the front desk volunteering. You know, it was 2017, I was at the front desk volunteering, you know, writing names and everything. And people saw K Factor, uh, because that's my nickname at the back of my, you know, shirt. And they were like, is this really K Factor? Why would K Factor be on the front desk? You know, that guy online that we used to see. <laughs> but one, one. And, you know, for many people who saw me at that event, it changed many things about it. So, uh, you know, it's just about being kind, you know, it, and it's learnable, being kind, showing kindness to people, listening to them, even if you can't give them money, you know, listen to people, just show that you care about them. And when you care about people, they will care about you too, and they will care about your cause. It's as, it's as simple as that. It's not just about like, you know, saying I'm running this organization and all. It's about truly, truly, truly caring about the people you serve. You know, uh, we are leaders, you know, we should care about the people. The reason why we get all the opportunities we get, the reason why, you know, we get, you know, all of the travels we get is because the people that we f- that follow us gives us the opportunity to be leaders. As a leader of an organization, you're more or less like an alpha and people will give you all the packs of leadership, knowing that when they are in need, you would protect them. In the olden days, we used to have the king and, you know, the people would bring food to the king, they will bring yam to the king. They will bring everything to the king. In fact, some people will say that they would bring their child to say, king, can you marry our child? You know, right? Kind of thing like that. You know, mm-hmm. they will bring lots of things for the king. But the truth is that they expect that the king as well should protect them when they are in need. So when the war, war erupts, what happens? Who goes to the forefront? The king will go to the forefront to put, protect the people. But if the king runs away, right? then the king has broken the social contract. And as leaders, as people who work with people, there are unwritten rules and social contract that, is, that bounds relationship. And, you know, once it's broken, then you've broken the trust. And then people will not be able to support you and help you anymore. They will be like, this person is in the seat for themselves, not for us. So when people, the people we work with, you know, when they need us, we need to be there for them our family, our friends, you know, the people we care about, the people who are close to us, you know, when they need us, it's a social contract. The reason why they give us the leadership position is knowing that we'll protect them in return. But once we, you know, we don't protect them, we've broken the social contracts. And this social contract is what guides politics as well. The reason why the people don't trust the people anymore or trust the leaders anymore or trust the presidents or anybody anymore is because there's a lot of broken social contracts. So we would give you this electricity will give you so 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 and so you know you promise all of these things and then you come in you don't do them you know um so there's a broken social contract already the reason you know people don't care if people in this senate house or house of assembly are earning some amount of money higher than them or bigger than them they don't care but 
the care, you know, the, 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 but if you're there in that position and you're not representing the people, and you're not giving people what they need, what they want, right? What you know, you're not you're not representing them. The rules are bad. You're not doing anything. Then you've broken the social contract, and then people will start to rebel. People will start to complain. People will start to come out. You know. So the first thing is to also understand what are the unwritten rules of relationship and humans. What are the social contracts? The reason why somebody will respect you is because there's an unwritten rule and social contract. The day you break that social contract, the day you don't look out for them. The day you're not you're you 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 stabbing you stab them in their back, they will be like, no, I can't work with this person. So we need to understand those unwritten rules. You know, I've talked about emotional back accounts. I've talked mm-hmm. about contracts. I've talked about unwritten rules of relationship. You know, so we we need all of these things. You know, to to um to survive as humans and as as, as human beings. We are social animals. Our life is built on other people, and we need to understand that. And we need to learn to nurture and build those relationships. Care about the people that are in our charge. Care about the people that are loved ones. Those are the people that get us to the next level. Those are the people that takes us to wherever we want to go. You know, most times we admire and we aspire. And we look at, you know, the future. But the people in the future don't care about us. The people who truly care about us and the people in the present. The people who get you to the next level, to the next room are in the present. The person who writes your recommendation letter are in the present. Your loved ones, your family, when you are in trouble, the people who first come out for you to support you are your family and your loved ones. But we don't care about those people. We look at the future, everything won again, and we forget to be present. You know, and the truth is that if you fail to be present, you will lose both the future and the present, and then you have nowhere to go. Oh, Wow. It's always a very introspective time. Every time I get a conversation with you because it's always so deep. If you're joining us for the first time, my guest is Hamed Kayodi Alabi. He's a social entrepreneur, a two-time author. He is an SDGs youth champion, education and youth activist. And he talks about a lot of things, including education, inspiration, which is very apparent, personal development, leadership. Those are the things that make him tick. And I'm guessing you can feel his pulse. You can watch us live on YouTube, even though we are gradually and fast joined to the end of this conversation. If you want to send in your thought, anything that you have picked up in the course of this conversation, or you just want to make an addition, it's fine. You can quickly send it to WhatsApp. It is 0809-444-0981. Again, 809 444 0981. I'll take this one from Wilson, who says, Good morning, Madame Buluashi, and my regards to your guest. I think building relationship in whatever sphere of life one finds himself matters a lot. And as you build relationship, be careful about the right relationship. Build the right relationship with the right persons because some people are just odds. So no one, so one should be careful, be selective. I do not say stigmatize or discriminative. Good relationship is a wonderful opportunity. And the rewards in the long run can be so amazing. Thank you for your message, Wilson. We'll take a short break now. And when we come back, we'll be saying bye to Hamed Kayadi Alabi. Of course, he will drop some further words and marble from uh, for us because he's been dropping gems in between all of that. You're listening to Office Journal here on Smooth 98.1. Your earnings. So we are almost out of time. Your savings. savings. I noticed that you are giving me some signals. No, I was not giving you signals, though. Yeah, really. I was like, should I keep going or should I stop? Oh, no. <laughs> I was really scared. Like, I hope I'm not... No, 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 no. By all means. So when we come back, you release all that is in your mind for the next 10. We go on. It's all about your finances made easy. What you're about to hear is a listening experience. No. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Smooth. Yes. Smooth R&B and soul music. Smooth 98.1, love music, love life. Yes, it's a Strictly Soul. The show is Strictly Soul. It runs from 10 till 1. But right now, the time is for Office Journal. It runs from 11 till 11.50 every Tuesday. And you can be a part of the conversation. We talk about things relating to you as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, a business executive, whatever it is that you do. As long as you are relating with people, you're making money, you want to do things, you want to be more productive, be a better person, 
you will find conversations that are beneficial to you right here. My guest is Hamed Kayode Alabi, and like I mentioned, he has quite the resume. He likes to talk about leadership topics, activism, social development, because he's a social entrepreneur, and so many things. We've been talking about relationships, and he's been sharing his story because he is somebody who loves telling stories. He believes we are a composition of our stories, which of course have been as a result of our journeys and he's never shy of sharing that. So again, thank you so much for being my guest this morning. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for having me on the show. And yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, always insightful to talk about things like this because you you just get reflective and continue to think uh, personally. And again, we I'm still a bond of, of um, you know, I can't say that I'm the best relationship builder because it's something you keep learning as you continue to interact with people. And the truth is, um, you have to be that person, you know. Um, you know, most of the time we try for the other person to be something we want, but mm. we must be that person that they want. Um, so we it's not just about them, it's also about us. Um, so if you're expecting somebody to be kind, be kind as well. Um, uh, because it's very easy to lose ourselves in trying to say that somebody should be something to fit our own narrative, but we're not trying to be that person. Um, so um, really, really important that uh, when we also think about relationship, we also think, what are we also giving um, in this relationship? What are we also like, you know, um, you know, letting go in this relationship? You know, what are we also learning as a person in building this relationship? You know, and, and again, for me, it's me being very, very reflective of, of myself and of who I am. And I, um, I would say, I mean, I mentioned this in uh, the events I had in my learning events, and it's one of the ways you can keep yourself in check. Because again, you know, it's not about others as well. It's also about you. And it's really important to also keep yourself in check in the process of building this relationship to ensure that, you know, you, you know what we want, what we give to others as well, uh, it's also what we need. as if, mm. And that's how we survive. Um, so how do we keep ourselves in check? You know, how do we ensure that, you know, we build a solid relationship and we don't mar the relationship by what is going around us? And I tie to this self, you know, it's like self. And under this self, you know, uh, we've gotten self-awareness, right? Um, so uh, you should be aware of who you are. You should be aware of your strengths. You should be aware of your why, what you do. Um, I know on social media today, people share a lot of things. I've been excited. I've gotten this. You should understand that your journey is different from other people's journey. And that helps you to, you know, build relationship. You should replace uh, judgment with curiosity. How did this person win this? How did this person get this? You know, and once you're replacing judgment with curiosity, you open yourself, you know, for building relationship, for learning about other people. Uh, um, as well so that when you get into a room and you're having conversation you understand this person you you're able to read through that journey you have, you have replaced judgment with curiosity basically and you know to be self-aware of who you are to be to understand that your journey is different from other people's journey you need to have self-conversation and uh, you know which brings me to the conversation aspect of myself um, so you need to talk to yourself to say why am I thinking this way why am I jealous of this person why am I not talking to this person what have I done to this person why have I said this you know, when you have several conversation, it helps you to be self-aware. You know, oh, that's fine, Ahmed. It's fine that this person is making 100,000 pounds than you. That's okay. That's their journey. It's different from your journey. What you're doing is totally different. The capital you bring to the table are totally different. You're unique in your own way and you're unique in, you know, in, they are unique in their own way. And that creates a pathway for relationship building. And it helps you understand that our role in the work we do are different. We need to understand our role in the industry. We need to understand our role in an organization. And that helps us to like, you know, build relationship, understand that we are just the piece in the, in the puzzle. We are just the piece in the jigsaw puzzle. And without us, you know, other people too will not thrive because we are just a piece to complete that puzzle, you know, to complete that big goals, basically. So we need to play our role. So for me, I constantly have conversation with myself, basically. And then we also have to be self-critical. You know, and that, that means, you know, evaluate yourself, evaluate who you are as a person, evaluate yourself in the, in the relationship, um, you know, so be, be self-critical. I won't tell you what I would not do. And I won't accept, expect something from you that I would not, you know, do. So self-critical is really, really important. It keeps us in check. And um, the last one is self-compassion, ability to forgive ourselves. 
Mm. In the relationship, you will make mistakes. That that would happen, right? So you need to learn how to forgive yourself um, uh, most of the time. I think we don't forgive ourselves enough, but it's fine to make a mistake in a relationship. That's okay. And it's okay to apologize. It's okay to forgive yourself and, and let things go and then continue to work on yourself and build from there. Um, I think I'm going to gonna stop here, but it's been a pleasure to share all of these insights. Wow, this thing called time, it's never enough when you're having valuable conversations like this. Oof, I thought 15 minutes was going to be so much. Turns out it is not enough, but thank you so much. Forgive yourself and accept forgiveness. Be compassionate to yourself. That is good. In fact, all the gems, if we were to extract all the gems that you have dropped on us this morning we should be so rich right now thank you so much coyote it's okay, always a thanks. pleasure with you yeah, thanks thank thanks you. for the opportunity to to come here and share um, such a pleasure and you can find her med coyote alabi across all social media platforms you can start with linkedin where he drops so many thoughts real unfiltered the way it comes his life experiences you can find him on linkedin at hamed that's h-a-m-m-e-d coyote alabi and then you can find him on instagram and twitter as i am k factor and then you can also find him on facebook at hamed coyote alabi just reach out and see a lot that he has to offer and of course he just released two books or rather one book which is titled Five years, 10 lessons taught, a uh, 10 lessons life taught me. I have personally read that book and I tell you it is such a compression of wisdom, knowledge, and a lot of life experiences. So you can check out that across all social media platforms. You'll see the link and how to go about it. Thank you again. And oh, by the way, I'll drop this. YouTube link for you on our WhatsApp status. That's why you need to be a part of it. So if you're listening right now, you're not part of our WhatsApp family. Send me your name and where you're listening to us from. Send it to WhatsApp 0809 So I'll save your contact and you'll view our status. This is where I buy out, I'll, or rather bow out for Office Journal this Tuesday, but I'll be back with Strictly So All the Soul Sounds. My name is Oluwa Shewundushegu, and of course you have to take care of yourself and stay tuned. Thank you. Well, Always a pleasure. I hope I have not eaten so much into your time. Uh, I'm just came back to work now, and yeah, you know, I already blocked. I blocked my cousins already for this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you more. Thanks for joining the show, and thanks for always being there. Yeah. So I'll share the link with you later on. Seeing you in Nigeria. Like this. <laughs> 29th September. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. All right, now. See you. Yeah, bye. bye.